All right, so investment banks are known for paying hundreds of thousands of pounds and dollars to fresh graduates, 21 year olds straight out of uni. But today we're gonna to find out which investment bank pays the worst. Let's go. All right, so the structure of this video is gonna be as follows. We're gonna start with the lowest paying investment bank and work our way to the highest paying. Spoiler alert, the lowest paying is Deutsche Bank and the highest paying is Goldman Sachs. Two, we're gonna to touch on the base salaries, the bonus component, and then total compensation. So the total comp is base salaries plus bonuses. And the third thing to mention is that I'm gonna be referring to base salaries for analysts in the investment banking division in London specifically. So first year analysts in London. I'm gonna give all the figures before before tax and then what they would expect to take home on a monthly basis after tax and I'll do that for their base salaries and their total compensation. All right, enough babbling, let's get straight into it. All right, in ninth place, so the worst paying investment bank out of the global investment banks that we're gonna be covering is Deutsche Bank. So if you're a first year analyst straight out of uni working in their investment banking division, you can expect to earn a base salary of 65,000 pounds and then your bonus would be 23,000 pounds. So the total compensation for the year, 2023 would be 88,000 pounds. 65K base salary, that's before tax. So after tax, you're gonna take home 46,749 pounds for the year. Uh, and that's a monthly take home pay of 3,896. Now, if you do that for the total compensation, so including the bonus, that's 88,000 pounds total compensation. After tax, that's gonna be 60,089 pounds. And then on a monthly basis, that's 5,007 pounds. That's Deutsche Bank. All right, next we've got joint position, UBS and Barclays. So they both pay a 65K base salary. They both pay bonuses of, these are averages by the way, so, 27,000 pounds. So the total compensation is gonna be 92,000 pounds. So 4K more than Deutsche Bank. The source for the data and relevant resources and links will be in the video description below for anyone that wants to check it out. So once again, 65K base salary means your annual take home is 46,749 pounds, which is a monthly figure of 3,896. Now, if you're on a 92K total compensation package, then you're gonna take home 62,400. And on a monthly basis, that's gonna be 5,200. Next, we've got Morgan Stanley. So they're gonna pay a base salary higher than the previous three, not 65K, they're gonna pay 70K base salary, 24K bonus, and that's total compensation of 94,000 pounds. So a 70K base salary turns out to be 49,649 pounds after tax and on a monthly basis that's 4137 pounds a month for their total compensation for 94 grand earned after tax you're going to take home 63569 pounds on a monthly basis that's 5297 pounds all right next another joint position we've got JP Morgan and Credit Suisse who both pay 70k base salary they both pay a 26k bonus so total compensation is 96000 pounds 70k base salary turns into 49649 pounds after tax that's 4137 pounds each month in your pocket and if your total compensation is 96 grand then you take home 64 grand 729 and on a monthly basis, that's 5,394. Keep in mind, bonuses aren't paid every month, right? So you get your base salary of 70K, and so that's split every month, you know, three, four grand, however much it is. And then at the end of the year or the beginning of the next year, you get your bonus. So in this case, for JP Morgan and Credit Suisse analysts, they'll get a bonus of 26K. After tax, you know, it's not gonna be anywhere near that. Their 70K base salary turns to 49K or 50K after tax. And then their 96K total compensation turns to 64K after tax. So 50K to 64K, including the bonus, that's a difference of 14K. So what I'm basically saying is they got a bonus of 24K, but they lost 10K of that to tax. So from their bonus of 24K, they take home 14K. Next, we've got Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. Base salary of 65K, a bigger bonus than the other ones. That's 35K bonus. So total compensation is 100 bags, 100 grand, 100,000 pounds. So 65K turns into 46,749 pounds per year after tax. That's 3,896 pounds per month. But if your total package is 100K, so including the bonus, then after tax, you're left with 67,049 pounds. 
that's £5,587 each month. All right, second place or second highest paying firm of the nine we're discussing is Citigroup. So they pay a base salary of 70K, bonus of 32K, total compensation of £102,000. 70K turns into £49,649 after tax or £4,137 each month. And total compensation of 102 grand turns into 67 thousand eight hundred and nine pounds after tax which on a monthly basis is five thousand six hundred and fifty one all right and then in first place the highest paying bank in the investment banking division for first year analyst is goldman sachs so they pay a lower base salary than a lot of the others they pay a base salary of 65k but their bonus is where it's at they pay a bonus of forty one thousand pounds so total compensation 65 plus 41 is 106,000 pounds for the year. So base salary of 65K, that turns into 46 grand 749 after tax, or on a monthly basis, that's 3,896 pounds after tax. And then if you're a first year analyst and your total compensation is 106,000 pounds, from that after tax, you see 69,329 pounds. You pay a lot of money in taxes and national insurance contributions. And on a monthly basis, that's £5,777. Here's a chart that shows total compensation before tax and total compensation after tax. So you can compare. It's worth mentioning, if you look at the highest compared to the lowest, so the GS first year analyst earns 106 k total compensation and the Deutsche Bank analyst earns £88,000 total compensation. So the difference between the highest and the lowest is about, what, £18,000. However, if you look at the post-tax earnings, uh, the GS analyst is gonna be on like 69,000 pounds and the Deutsche Bank analyst gets 60,000 pounds. So although it's an 18K earnings difference, after tax, it's only 9K. If you're wondering, okay, they're earning this much money, how much do they make per hour? Because everyone knows investment banking, you're gonna work long hours. This division specifically, they make the most, they work the longest hours, their bonuses are the biggest. Typically, you're gonna work 80 to 100 hours every week for your first year or two. So let's say they work 90 hours a week. They work six days, 15 hours a day, that's 90 hours. So if you do that for 50 weeks, that's 4,500 hours. Let me check my maths. 4,500 hours. If you're earning 100,000 pounds and you work 4,500 hours, you're roughly working or earning 22 pounds, 22 pence every hour. If you are working in sales and trading or asset management, private equity, hedge funds, etc., your hourly rate is gonna be higher than that. That begs the question, why do people go into investment banking? Truth is, it has very good exit opportunities. It's kind of like a training ground. The skills you learn there allow you to open better doors in the future. So it's kind of one or two years of slugging, grunt work, learning the ropes, and then, you know, you can explore better exit opportunities later. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that video. If you made it this far, give this video a thumbs up, share it with anyone who needs to see it, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.